All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It seems like every time we start a video lately, we're in the truck going to get something here. Pick up junk. <laughs> I don't know if we can quite call this one junk. I mentioned it in a few videos ago about helping a good friend out here. So we're on our way there now, and we'll catch you guys shortly. So we're back at the shop here and we got the next project rolling in. It's a 1966 Chevy Nova SS and we're going to be finishing up a few things on it for a good friend of mine here. Some wiring and a few other things. So this will be a good uh, little video for you guys. So let's go ahead and get it unloaded. Car is in the shop and now on the hoist. So since I already went ahead and had it lifted up, I actually started working on a little bit of it as we'll get to at the back of it. But we'll start underneath and then we'll work our way to what's underneath the hood. This has pretty much all new body panels all throughout the car. And new bumpers, grill, anything, chrome. Everything is pretty much brand new. So we've got the Krager wheels. I believe these are 17s, yep. With some hand-cooked tires. And again, look at the front there with all the brand new chrome bumpers, grills, bezels around the headlights. It has Willwood front brake kit, all four wheel disc brakes, rack and pinion steering. This is an entire front clip car that was changed over from Yogi's. And then it's got, as you can see there, hooker long tube headers. The transmission is a turbo 350. Uh, it's a stage two, and you'll see why shortly. Do have a drive shaft sitting in here. Turn the light on here so maybe we can get a better look. And also, it's got a four nine inch with a four link rear suspension kit, also from Yogi's, with the same Willwood brake set up in the rear. Well, it's not the same, but it's part of the kit that they send. And then, as I was stating, I do have the gas tank removed. And I will show you why shortly. I'm not sure what he's running for tires on the rear here. It looks like a 235.55. Not too wide, but fits up in there nicely. All right, let's go ahead and we'll let it down and get a shot of what's up top. So with the car down, we'll go ahead and start in the rear here. This, I guess to touch base on it, everything just came from the body shop, fresh paint job, needs a lot of work to finish up as far as trim around windows, needs glass in it, and just a lot of minor details to be streetable. But in the back here, we do have the ICT billet battery hold down. It's going to go in the rear now. And here is the classic auto air. So he is putting the AC into this. It's got carpet in the trunk area. That's pretty much all ready to go back there. Again, needs a rear glass in it. Went ahead and put Dynamat throughout the interior. New steering column, steering wheel. Does have some goodies like Dakota Digital Gauges that I'll show you here in a moment. Side windows are in, but he needs a lot of this... Again, trim work and stuff that goes around here, drip rail, chrome, stuff like that. Small cowl hood on there. Needs front glass as well. Working on getting that scheduled. And then this is where all the goodies are at, in my opinion, because I'm all about horsepower. This is TriStar Engines. If you haven't heard of them, I hadn't until Carl found them. They're TriStar Engines. They're out of Wisconsin. This is a 406. It's got a dart block, um, dart intake, I believe dart heads as well. Not 100% certain on the combination. If you want to go to their website, it's just a kit that they sell on there. I did have them upgrade to the Sniper EFI on here. So that is the reason for the fuel tank removal. Went ahead and purchased just a EFI ready tank for a 66 Nova. Also went ahead and purchased the CVF front serpentine kit. 
So that way that is all set up. Don't have to worry about anything there. Um, that's just setting in there, but we've got the low car dipstick. We've got under header plug wires coming. There's the Willwood master cylinder for the disc brakes, just a manual. This car, more than likely, will probably not get driven much. So I know the manual disc brakes are kind of a negative, some people would say, versus the power disc brakes, but it'll work fine. It's mainly probably gonna sit. He might start up a few times. We'll see if we can burn the first rubber off the tires because he probably won't do it, so. This engine does make on the dyno 540 horsepower. Items on our list are radiator hoses, heater hoses, throttle, all the fuel system, wiring, um, obviously plug wires. We gotta get coolant, we gotta get tranny fluid, we gotta get motor oil. And what else do we have over here? We've got a whole bench full of parts here. Here's the rest of the Willwood stuff. We've got the fans for the radiator, some sniper stuff, gas pedal, throttle, Dakota digital gauges. So we've got to go ahead and wire up all of the control box and stuff for those, which means we'll have to uh, get some of this wiring put in here because you have to cut a lot of that off to go to that pigtail box. I've got to put the starter on. We've got to reclock this to clearance for the hooker headers. MSD 6AL, the blaster 2 coil, uh, scatter shield for the transmission. And also I've got some other stuff over here on the shelf as well. Uh, let's see, we've got Optima battery. I believe this is just some wiper arms and then a Holly sniper. Went ahead and purchased the actual Holly sniper air cleaner so that way there will be no clearance issues. I'm not sure if there would be without the Holly sniper air cleaner but went ahead and purchased that one because it does I believe clearance for the ports on the side here. And then other things that we've got coming we do have a full exhaust coming and let me take a look at my list here like I said the fuel tank, radiator hoses, the under header plug wires, holders, brake line kit. I did find a stainless steel brake line kit from inline tube, I believe. No, it was not. The right stuff. They had a stainless steel brake line kit for this. The only thing we're going to have to change is actually the proportioning valve up front. They do run different brake line sizes than this master cylinder that's on here. So we'll have to make those lines. Hopefully the rest of it will be correct and fit. Other than that, that's just a quick look at the car and some of the things we have to do to it. We're hoping to have this done in a short time frame here, because keep in mind we do have the event at the end of June that we would like to attend up west of Milwaukee, I believe it was, I don't know the exact name of the town, with the death trap here. And what the plans are for this, I know I've kind of touched base on this, we've gone back and forth, we don't really have a good option at this point with the time frame for sending the heads off. Ooh. My brother's swamped with trying to get motors done for paying customers, we'll say, and I'm not one of those, so I understand that. So what the plan is, is we're actually going to take the crack that was in that intake runner. All right, well, I guess there was cracks on the top side of the head and everything. Either way, we're actually gonna go ahead and deburr that and make a little bit of a groove and try epoxy in that. We've ran epoxy in heads before. It's pretty good stuff. You're gonna have coolant pressure of about 16 PSI and I'm running about boost of 10, 11. So that'll, you know, basically kind of wash that out and make the pressure real low. So I think the balance of that will actually do that well in that head, but we're gonna give it a shot. Worst case, you can always remove it. So that's the plan with this. I know I just pulled the motor out but that same one to go back in. I have all the rocker assemblies and everything underneath the towels. Everything is still in order, so it'll be a quick bolt the heads back on, put all the valve train back on in the same order. We won't have to mess around with any of that stuff, so that'll be the quickest option for us. So at this point, like I said, we've got parts coming, overnighted for this. We're gonna keep this thing rolling along here. Hopefully, real soon, we'll be able to fire this thing up and actually hear it run. The only thing that we know is that it ran on the dyno and made 540 horse.
Other than that, we'll catch you guys in the next video with some updates on the Nova. Until then, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching.